Okay, we're going to start out these uh, example problems with just a quick revisit of the order, the dimension of a matrix. Uh, I'm going to start with four and work my way back to one because these, uh, these first three ch tend to be uh, more confusing to people. So let's look at four, pretty straightforward. Remember, it's how tall the matrix is by how wide the matrix is. Um, so how tall is it? It's one, two, three tall. It has three rows. And it has one, two, three, four columns. So it's three tall by four wide. Okay. Now these are the ones that, that prove to be weird when one of the dimensions is one. Right? So we just got to think, how tall is this? It's three tall. And it is one wide, one column wide. Um, and this one is uh, how tall. Right, it is one tall by one, two, three, four. It's weird to think that each column only has one thing in it, but that's how it works. And so this one would be one by two. One by two. Okay, so that's the order of of those four matrices. Okay, and now we'll move on to number nine. We're gonna actually. Uh, make one of these matrices and you're going to see start to see why we want to use them. So there's number nine. It's a system of equations and they say to write the augmented matrix that represents the system of equations. Um, let's before we do that, just before that, let's think what we would do if we were going to solve this system. We would um, we would eliminate this 5 here, this 5x, so we might multiply this equation by negative 5 uh, and add that to the second equation and then write a whole new set of equations. Um, so maybe somebody was sitting around and they thought, gosh, that's a lot of writing. Okay, and remember, I've, I've, I may have said to you before that one of the goals of mathematicians is to use as little ink as possible. So they said, let's, instead of writing all of these x, y's, and z's and all that stuff and equal signs. Let's just put everything into a little box called a matrix, and we won't even write the x, y's, and z's. We'll just write the coefficients. Okay, so the coefficient of this guy is what? It's a one, one times x. So we'll put a one here, and then we'll put the ten for the coefficient of this y, and we'll put a negative two here, uh, and then we'll put a little colon here to to represent the equal sign, uh, and we'll put a two there. And then we'll put 5, negative 3, 4, 0 for the second equation, and the third equation. It's really important here at the z, not to leave it blank, but to put that there's 0. There's 0 z's there. And then we'll put a 6. Okay, pretty straightforward. Uh, so that's the augmented matrix. And what we'll do is everything just as bit the same. I don't even know if that made sense. Everything's going to be the same. We're going to do the same operations to the rows of this matrix as we did to these equations. Okay. So if I want to eliminate this uh, this 5x here, it would be the same as turning this into a 0. Okay. So we're going to eliminate this x, we'll eliminate this x, we're going to turn this into a 0, turn this into a 0. We'll multiply this row by negative 5 and we'll add it to this row and you may see where I'm going there and we'll actually do a specific example uh, in another number. Um, but that's all we're supposed to do. Just write an augmented matrix and you kind of see why we would do something like that. So let's do another one real quick. We'll do number 10. It has more blank spaces to fill in. So there is our uh, number 10 and we just want to write the augmented matrix for that. So this one just has more blank spaces that we need to be, be sure to fill in. Um, so the coefficient of this x is 1 and then we have negative 3, 1 for the z, a little colon there, and then a 1 on the other side of the equation. Okay, nothing. There's zero x's here, so we'll put a coefficient of zero. And four here, also a zero here, zero there. Fill those with zeros, seven, and negative five. There we go. There's our augmented matrix for number 10. Okay, um, and that's a good skill to have. Let's go to number 11. We'll just go the other way. Right, so we're given the augmented matrix and we'll write the system of equations. Um, the thing that's a little bit arbitrary is really what variables we use. We could use x, y, a, b, q, z, whatever we want. Um, but since we're accustomed to it, we'll use uh, this will be x and this will be y. 
it really doesn't matter. This could be y and this could be x, as long as these are all the same and these are all the same. So 3x plus 4y is equal to 9, and 1x minus 1y is equal to negative 3. All right, so we're just going the other way. So we see the relationship between a system of equations and its augmented matrix. Okay, so let's move on to 21 and 22. What we're supposed to do here is, uh, well, let me go back for a second. Keep in mind what I said before. We're going to write these augmented matrices, and we're going to use them like we would um, the equations in a system. So what we'll do is uh, we'll try to have uh, you know x, y, z here. We'll try to eliminate x. We'll just keep y and z here. We'll get rid of x and y, and we'll keep z here. That's the like the end goal here. Um, so keeping that in mind, um, what they're going to do in these uh, in these exercises in 21 and 22 is take this matrix and start moving it towards uh, a matrix that looks more like the system of equations that we want to see with these x's and y's and stuff eliminated, like we've been doing in 7.3. So the question is, how do they get from this matrix to this matrix? And it's just showing you that you can treat this matrix like a system of equations doing the exact same things. Uh, multiplying this guy by whatever, exchanging rows if you uh, want to do that, uh, adding rows together, adding multiples of rows together. Right? You can multiply this by 2 and multiply this by 5 and add those together, just like we could do with equations. So how do they get from here to there? Uh, the first thing I th see is this 0. And if I were doing this, if this were a system of equations where there was no x here, and you know I want to eliminate x here in this second equation, I'd put this down there. And that's just what they've done. Right? This row looks exactly like this first row, and this row looks exactly like this second row, and all they've done is switch the position of these two rows. So they, we could just say they switched uh, rows, which is the same as equations, rows uh, 1 and 2. That's all they did. So let's look at this guy. What, what happened here? How did they get from here to there? We look, the row 1 looks the same, row 2 looks the same, row 3 is different, so they did something. Uh, it has a 0 here, so they eliminated this x, uh, essentially, in this equation or the, the, that this equation represents, or this row represents some equation. You get it. So how did they do that? How would you choose to do that? Um, well, we want to eliminate this guy. This is easy to, to mess around with and uh, make the opposite of this. Right? We just multiply this by 5 and add it to that. Let's, um, let's just write what that would be. Right? We do negative 1 times 5 would be negative 5. Negative, or say, let's say 5 times negative 1. Then 5 times negative 2 would be negative 10. And then 5 times 3 would be 15. And then 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And let's see, if we add these together, do we get this new third row? This eliminates 4 minus 10 is negative 6. 15 minus 7. Uh, is 8, and 6 minus 10 is negative 4. So they added added uh, 5 times row 1 to row 3. That's what they did. And that's the kind of thing we're going to do to eliminate, quote, x's and y's. Uh, but really what we're doing is turning the, these positions to zeros, this one to zero, this one to zero, and then uh, you know just the same as we were before when they were systems of equations. Okay, that's going to be our goal. So now let's move on to some new problems. Number 33. We're going to turn this into row echelon form and recall from uh, from the first video, the video before this one, that uh, row echelon form looks like one and then zeros below that and come down here and the first thing you'll see is a one and zeros below that and we'll see a one and then there's no zeros below that this is the last row okay so we are going to do all this the same stuff we were doing the same strategies for canceling at x and x and y um, and make this as do a zero and these two into zeros and then making not only that okay understand there's one extra step not only getting zeros here but also ones here so that's what we're going to do. Um, and the thing to keep in mind is I'm going to do it, obviously, some particular way. I'm not sure how yet, but I'm going to do it some particular way. You could do it a different way. 
Um, you know, one thing is you could switch row one and row two before you even start, and now you've got a completely different thing. Um, your row echelon form, if you went in a different room and didn't watch this and you did it, it would look possibly different from my row echelon form. Okay, unless we do it exactly the same way, our row echelon forms can be different, and that's okay. Uh, the row echelon forms not unique, can be different. So with that being said, let's just get started here. Um, so maybe to, to help things be more uh, followable, uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. So um, I'm going to add row 1 and row 2, and that's going to be my new row 2. Okay, just like we might add equation 1 and 2 and then replace equation 2. So we're going to add equation, that's not what I wanted to write, equation 1 to equation 2, and then I'm putting an arrow because that's where I'm going to write my row 2. Okay, uh, So here we go, my row 1 is going to be the same, 1, 2, 3, 0. This is a good row 1, we should keep it because we got a 1 right there where we want it. Um, and it's it, one is nice to have up here so that we can easily eliminate with other stuff. Anyway, um, it's easy enough to just add these together. We get 0, and 4 plus 2 is 6, and uh, 0 plus 3 is 3, and negative 5 plus 0 is negative 5. Okay, so that's all done. Um, now, we could here in the same step uh, easily eliminate the row 1 with row 2. Okay, um, what I'll do just to make it easier to follow again is just in between, I'm going to write um, the new row that I would use to cancel out this row. So what would I do to this row so that I could cancel it out with this guy here? Well, I'd multiply it by negative 2. So I'm going to do negative 2 times equation 1, and that's going to be negative 2. Then negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Then we get negative 6 and then we get zero. All right, so then we're gonna take that negative two times equation one and we're gonna add it to, I keep saying equation, row one and row three. So negative two times row one plus row three, so that's what we're gonna do here. We get zero, and then six minus four is two, and three minus six is negative three, and 10 plus zero is 10. All right, so we've eliminated these two. We have zeros here, okay? Um, and what you do at this point, it's, it's kind of up to you, but I'm going to choose to turn this into a one, okay? Um, maybe, I, maybe I lied. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and eliminate this guy. I'm gonna get rid of that guy. Um, so, and, and, and to make it easier to follow, I'm going to just write what those new things are going to be so that uh, I can uh, show the new row that I'm going to eliminate. Uh, so I want to eliminate this 2 here. So what I'll do is multiply this by negative 3. So it'll be the opposite of 6. So negative 3 times row 3 is going to give me 0. And negative 6, just like I want. Negative 3 times, oh, negative 3, that's, that's something you got to be careful of. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. All right. And then I'm going to get this new matrix in black that has the same first row. 1, 2, 3, 0. 0, 6, 3, negative 5. And okay, so here we go. Uh, row 3 with row 2 to give us a, no, a new row 3. So let's write that. Uh, so negative 3 times row 3 plus row 2, that's going to be our new row 3. So 0 and 0, of course, is 0. 6 and negative 6 is 0. Uh, 3 and 9 is 12. And negative 5 and negative 30 is negative 35. OK. Um, and we, we want to make sure that we're, we're doing all our math right. OK. Just watch out for those arithmetic errors. Um, so now we have all of these are zeros, but also these need to be ones. The first non-zero in any row needs to be a one. So that's what we're going to work on. How are we going to turn this into a one? Well, we can do anything we want all the way across a row, right? Rep this represents an equation. We can do anything to an equation as long as we do it all the way through on both sides of the equation. Um, so we'll multiply through all the way through this row by one-sixth, or just divide everything by six. 
Um, so let's see, get a new thing here. This one's fine, this one's good. Um, we will multiply this by one sixth. So multiply by one sixth. We'll multiply this by one twelfth. All right, and this, this one goes just straight through, and this will be our new matrix. So one, two, three, zero, zero, one. Six times one six, or six divided by six is one. Three divided by six is one half. And negative five divided by six is negative five sixths. Okay, and then zero times one twelfth is going to be 0, and then we get a 0 again, 12 divided by 12 is 1, it better be, and uh, negative 35 divided by 12, uh, let's see, that's just going to be negative 35 over 12. This is 3 times, so this is 5 times 7, and neither one of those uh, is a common factor with 12. Okay, so there it is uh, in all its ugliness, but here we have it in row echelon form. One here, next one below that is zero, and the first non-zero we see is one, and zero below that, and next non-zero we see is one, and so on. Um, okay, so that is uh, an example of putting it in row echelon form. So now what this, uh, and this is beyond what 33 is asking for, but uh, this represents a system of equations, x plus 2y plus 3z equals zero, x, or see, y plus 1 half z equals negative 5 6, and z equals negative 35 twelfths. So if we put this back into an equation, or system of equations, this is what z is. You know, 1 times z is equal to negative 35 twelfths. So we take that, we put it in here, we work it out, we find y, we take y and z, we put them in here, and we find what x is. Okay, so that's the point of this whole thing. Um, so, yeah, just a quick little snapshot of what's to come. All right, let's go on to 49. But just before that, though, I just thought as I was writing that down, when you take a matrix and write it in row echelon form, so when you take matrix to row echelon form, this is a verb thing, or not a verb thing, a vocab thing. When you take a matrix to row echelon form, what you have done is used... Gaussian elimination. Let me make sure I spell that right. Gaussian elimination. It's not a big deal, but when they say Gaussian elimination, they mean multiplying rows by numbers and adding rows together, switching the order of rows, and all that kind of stuff to get this arrangement. That's called Gaussian elimination. Okay, so just a side note, um, a vocab thing. So now we're going to take 49. We're actually going to write an augmented matrix, cancel things out using Gaussian elimination, then go back to a system of equations and do back substitution. Okay? It may be easier just to do this without matrices, but it is nice to get a simple example to start with, okay? rather than a really complicated one where you would actually want to use a matrix. So we're writing the augmented matrix to 1. You don't have to put these little colons if you don't want to, it's not really important. Um, but we're going to try and get this into row echelon form, which we have a good start on because this is a 1. And if the other row was a 1, I'd probably just switch it up here. Uh, so just so that gets said. So this will be row 1 and row 2. And uh, to cancel this 2, we're going to want this to be a negative 2, right? Multiply this by negative 2 so that we can cancel. So we'll do negative 2 times row 1, and I'll just show you what that is here. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. And our new matrix will have 1, 2, 7. And then we're going to take that negative 2 times row 1 and add it to row 3. No, 2. There's only 2 rows. Um, 2 minus 2 is 0, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, and 8 minus 14 is negative 6. All right, we're almost done with this. We just need this to be in row echelon form. We've canceled this guy out, but uh, a step beyond that when we're using matrices is to get this to be a 1. So pretty clear to see what we're going to do there. we got 1, 2, 7, 0, 1. What do we do? Divide that by a negative 3. Divide this by a negative 3, and you get 2. 
Okay, so this represents the uh, system of equations, x plus 2y equals 7 and y equals 2. So we just take this, we put it there, we get x plus 2 times 2 equals 7, x plus 4 equals 7, x equals 3. So the solution is, I just want a, a grand color here, uh, 3 comma 2. There is the solution. So we actually use the matrix here to solve a system. Okay, That might not seem that cool for a system of two equations, but when you have three or four or five equations, uh, it's much easier to use matrices than to be writing x's and pluses. Right? We, we knock out the, the necessity for using a plus. There's no plus. It's just a positive 2. So there's just less to write, and it takes less time. Um, not a little amount of time, but less time than it would to solve the system regularly. Okay, so next problem. All right, so 56, we're going to change this into an augmented matrix and then use that to solve the system. But in a slightly different way than one we just did, and I will tell you what that is. Remember, we need a placeholder of zero for that blank place there. Put that negative one. Make sure to put your negatives in there. That's very important. Easily missed. I don't know about easily, but pretty commonly missed. All right. So make sure everything's right before you start. Everything's you know positive, negative is good. Uh, zero is where they should be, and and now we can start. So um, first, let's get it into. Um, into row echelon form. That's what we're going to do using Gaussian elimination. Uh, so this is good. This is already canceled out. So we're going to get uh, this canceled out. And if this is row one, two, and three, how would we get rid of this seven? I'm going to choose to uh, multiply this by negative seven and this by two uh, and get what we're looking for. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is multiply this by uh, negative seven. So negative 7 times row 1, that's going to be negative 14, and positive 7, then negative 21, and then, whoa, I'm going to need my calculator. All right, so that's negative 168. And then we have uh, row 3, we're going to multiply that by 2. 2 times row 3 is going to be positive 14, negative 10, 0, and 12. So make sure all our negatives is negative times positive, negative, positive, negative, negative. Okay, so that's good. Um, and this is going to add to make our new row two. Okay, so this is the same. And our new row two is going to be these added together. So, uh, oh no, this is going to be our new row three. Excuse me. So our our row two is the same. We got 0, 2, negative 1, 14, because that was already a 0, and that's good. Add these together, and we get 0, we get negative 3, we get negative 21, and 12 minus 168, negative 156. All right, so there we go. There is uh, the next step along the way. We got this to be zeros, and now we'll get to this to be a 0. Uh, we'll do that by taking, say, equation 2, and we'll multiply equation 2 by 3. We'll make, multiply equation, or uh, row 3 by 2, and then we'll get positive and negative 6. So we got 0 and 6 and negative 3, and uh, 3 times 14, 42. Um, you know, let's see. So I was, uh, I was helping you guys with your quizzes recently, and you're getting huge numbers, and uh, I feel your pain. But one thing we could do, we do, we have big numbers here, but something we could do to make it a little easier on ourselves, uh, which means kind of going back on uh, what we've already done. So I'm going to just get rid of this stuff. Like now we have equation 3, or, or row 3, and we've eliminated that. But 
if you'll notice, uh, all of these are divisible by 3. And something that we're allowed to do is to multiply any row by any number we want. So we'll multiply by 1 3rd. We'll divide it by 3. And that will make things uh, a little bit easier, bring things down, make them a little bit smaller. Um, so we'll write a new matrix. I know this is taking up a lot of room, but that's kind of the way these things go. So here we go. 3, 24, 0, 2, negative 1, 14. Zero. Okay, we'll divide this by ne by by just uh, three. We'll get negative one. We'll get negative seven, and we'll get negative fifty-two. So that makes things a, a little easier. Rather than one fifty-six, we were about to multiply one fifty-six by two, and that would have been messy. Now we could just multiply this equation by two and and get that uh, to uh, cancel out the y things there. So. Let's do that. It's a little better. Uh, so we'll take uh, equation two, and then we'll uh, row two, and we'll take row three and multiply it by just two, and then we'll get things canceling out. So zero, two, negative one, fourteen, and this last row will be two times zero is zero. Two times negative one is negative two. Uh, we get negative fourteen. And 2 times negative 52 is negative 104. Okay. And then we'll add those together. That'll be our new row 3. All right. So row 1 is still 2, negative 1, 3, 24. Here we have that. Okay. And this last one, we have a 0 here. We have a 0 here. We have a negative 15 here and a 14 minus 104, negative 90. All right. Um, so now we, we have this going on. Um, and then the next step would be to write it in row echelon form, which means getting all these first numbers to be 1. So we'll divide this by 2. So that's 1, divide this by 2, we get negative 1 half. Divide this by 2, we get 3 halves. Divide this by 2, we get 12. This one we're going to divide by 2 as well to get 1, negative 1 half, and 7. And we'll divide this by negative 15. That's a doozy. So this will be 1, and then 90 divided by 15. Okay, so negative 90 divided by negative 15 is going to be 6. So that worked out nicely. Now, we are going to uh, eliminate everything above the ones. Okay, so it's in row echelon form. Now we're going to take it to reduce row echelon form. Okay, so from this point on, as we go towards reduce row echelon form, that's called Gauss-Jordan elimination. So when you go from row echelon form, which required Gaussian elimination, we're going to continue on to reduce row echelon form. That's going to be Gauss-Jordan elimination. Okay. So it's just what the the book is asking for, and so that's what we're, we're going to do. So how are we going to eliminate uh, this guy right here? Well. We, we need these to be opposites, and so if we take row 3 and we multiply row 3 by 1 half, then we'll have opposites here. So we have 0, 0, 1 half, and 3. And we'll add that to the second row, and we'll get a new second row. There we go. And 3 halves, 12. And here we go, new second row. Notice the, the cool thing about this is that now we've got zeros here, we we get to keep our one here. And then when we add these together, negative one half and one half, we just get a zero there. And then we get uh, seven plus three, and that gives us ten. All right. And then still zero, zero, one, six. Um so I, I guess I should say this is one half row 3 plus row 2, and that's how we got this new row 2. 
Um, and then we need to eliminate this, and so we'll take row 3, and we will multiply row 3 by negative 3 halves. We'll write down what that is. Uh, multiply this by negative 3 halves. The 2 cancels with a 6, gives us a 3. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. All right. I'm going off the screen here. So we'll just keep going down. Uh, we're going to get our new row 1 by taking negative 3 halves times row 3 plus row 1, and that's going to give us our new row 1. Uh, so, uh, 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus negative 1 half is still negative 1 half. And 3 halves minus 3 halves is 0. And 12 minus 9 is 3. And then we have our row 2, which is all nice and, and finished up. And row 3 is all finished up as well. Okay. And now we want to uh, get rid of this guy here. We're almost done. I know. It's tough. So we'll take row three, no, row two now, row two. We want to cancel out this one half, so we'll take row two, and we'll multiply it by one half. And that's what this will look like, zero, one half, zero, and five. We multiply it through here by one half, and that's what we got. And one plus zero is one. Negative one half plus one half is zero. Zero plus uh, zero is zero, and three plus five is uh, so eight. That was, a, that was a tricky one. And then our row two is the same, and our row three is the same as it was before. All right. Well, what in the world did we do that for? That was such a mess, um, and it, it's almost a preference thing as to whether you'd prefer to do this, um, but I'm going to ask you to do it, uh, and the book is asking us to do it, so we've done it, and think about what it represents. It represents this equation, uh, this represents an equation, x plus nothing plus nothing equals 8, x equals 8, y equals 10, z equals 6. So once we're done, there's no back substitution to do. Uh, we just have x is 8, and y is 10, and z is 6. Okay, so what did we do? We used Gauss-Jordan elimination to take it to reduced row echelon form. And when you're in reduced row echelon form, you get a 1 times z, is this number, 1 times y is this number, 1 times x is this number, and you have the solution. Okay, so there it is. For what it's worth, there it is. Um, and we've run out of room, so I'm just going to get rid of all that. And we'll move on to another number. And this will be the last that we do. 57... All right, so first step is to write a, uh, a an augmented matrix. So we'll do that. 1, 1, negative 5, and 3. 1, 0, negative 2, and 1. Uh, 2, negative 1, negative 1, and 0. And we begin. So this is a 1. That's good. We'll eliminate this guy here. So we'll take... Uh, negative 1 times equation uh, 2. So negative 1, 0, 2, negative 1. And we'll add that equation 1, and that'll be our new equation 2. So equation 2 will be negative, well, let's just say negative row 2 plus row 1. So row 1's the same. And we add this to row 1, we get 0. And we get 1, and we get negative 3, and we get 4. Right. And the row 3 is the same. Okay, now we want to eliminate this guy here in row 3, so we'll take row 3, 
and we'll multiply it. No, we won't take row three. We'll take row one. We'll multiply row one by negative two. All right, so negative two, negative two, positive ten, negative six, and that's gonna when we take that and we add it to row three, that'll be our new row three. Uh, so row one is the same. One one negative five. 3, 0, 1, negative 3, 4, and then we'll take uh, this negative 2 times row 1, that's what this is, plus row 1, or plus, uh, what did we do, negative 2 plus row 3, and that's our new row 3. So there's these added together, 2 minus 2, 0, perfect, negative 1 minus 2, negative 3, uh, negative 1 plus 10 is 9, and then 0 minus 6 is negative 6. All right. Um, now, this has worked out nicely. This is a 1 here, and uh, so we'll just take that row, uh, row 2, and we'll take row 2, and to cancel it out with this 3, this, or this negative 3, we'll multiply it by 3. So we get 0, and 3, and negative 9, and uh, where are we at? 3 times 4, that's 12. Okay, And so when we write our new matrix, 1, 1, negative 5, 3, uh, 0, 1, negative 3, 4, uh, and then we get... Uh, this 3 times row 2 plus our row 3, we get 0, uh, 0, 0, 6. Okay, so what do we make of that? All right, what I make of it is that we, uh, I made a mistake, and you probably saw it a while ago and were, was uh, thinking, why did he do that, right? Back here, I said, let's take negative row 2, that was this, plus row 1, that was this, so we should have, uh, everything was fine except for when we went negative 1 plus 3, we should have gotten uh, 2 and not 4, right? Why didn't you stop me? That's a 2. Uh, so it doesn't really change uh, a whole lot. Uh, we have, uh, everything's going to be about the same here. Um, See so negative two times row one, we get negative six, and then um, that was our new row three, and so that was negative six, and so but this should have been a two, so let's change that to a two. Uh, so when we multiply that by three, we should have gotten a six instead of a twelve. Okay, and then uh, negative six plus six should have been zero not 6. Okay, so it, it changes the solution here. It, it, it makes a big difference, but it wasn't a big fix. It was, it was easy to find the mistake and go back and fix it. So, and it's, I, I could have edited that out uh, and made it look like I didn't make a mistake, but I chose to leave it in because mistakes will happen and you will need to go back and figure it out. Okay, well, if it was just zero and then a six, what would that be saying? It would be saying that nothing on this side equals six, and that would have been no solutions. But now it's saying nothing on this side of the equation, right? This represents an equation. Nothing equals nothing, and that's true. Um, so if this were a system of equations, like in 7.3, would would have said, oh, there's an infinite number of solutions, um, but then that wouldn't have been quite enough, okay? Um, so what we can do is uh, go ahead and um, we could write this in reduced row echelon form. It wouldn't take very long because the only rules for that are um, that our, our first non-negative be a 1 and then 0 is below it. First non-negative is 1, 0 is below it, and then um, this happened to just go away. Okay. And then the other thing is when you come to your, your 1s here, above needs to be a 0 as well, so we may as well do that because that is what it, uh, they're asking for. So this is row two. We'll take row two. 
will cancel it out here. We'll, we'll, we'll multiply it by negative 1. So 0, negative 1, 3, negative 4. Uh, and we'll add it to that first row, and that gives us a new first row. 1, right? And then negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. And negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And then everything else is the same. And there's just no way uh, to do any like to do any other cancellation really, uh, because there's nothing else left down here to work with, and so now it's in reduced row echelon form. But just to say that there's an infinite number of solutions, it's not quite enough. We do need to keep going, uh, so we'll write this in equation form. We've got uh, x minus two z right. There's no y's here, so minus two z equals negative one. And x, or not x, sorry, y minus 3z equals 4. Okay, so we still have three unknowns, but we only have two equations. And since this was uh, true, since 0 equals 0 is true, um, then we don't have to, um, well, we just don't have a specific value for z. Normally, we'd get z equals like 3, or z equals 4, and then we do back substitution. But let's just say z equals something like a. Okay, so z equals a. Whatever z is, what would we do with it? What if it was 2? Well, we put it in here. We take 2 and we put it in this z. But we don't have a specific number, we just have a. So what would y equal if we just let z be whatever, a? Well, we get y minus 3a, whatever the number was for z, equals 4, and y equals 4 plus 3a. Okay. Um, so this is what y is equal to with respect to a. And now we have a thing with a in it, a thing with a in it, to substitute for uh, y and z. But it turns out all, all we need is z, because there's no y here. So we'll just plug a in here uh, in that top equation. x minus 2 times a the value that we that we would use for z and x equals negative 1 plus 2a so the solution is what do we get for x well let's work let's kind of work backwards whatever we get for a, for z we'll call it a we plug that in and y will be that number times 3 added to 4 right 4 plus 3a that's how we would find y and z would be negative 1 plus 2a okay so whatever you choose for z you plug it in. Like you put three here. Okay, z is three. Then y would be nine plus four, so that would be uh, thirteen. And then x would be three, right? We put three in there. Three times two, that's six. Minus one, that's five. So we'd have let's see if I can remember five, uh, thirteen, five, thirteen, and three. And then we could do it again for 4, 5, negative 2. There's an infinite number of solutions, and this is how we would find any of those solutions we wanted. Okay. Well, that'll do it. That's all the example problems I have. Uh, I know it, it takes a, a good deal of time, um, but there's not a ton of problems to do. So take some solace in that. Thank you for watching.